So happy hump day. It is Wednesday. Um, it's the last Wednesday of July, actually. Uh, I can't believe July is almost over. I'm not sure how you're all feeling about it. But welcome to our midweek stream or my midweek stream. I'm Philly Philly. And um, if you are joining us, um, welcome. And please say hello. I'd love to see who's watching and chat with you. And, um, and I'm by myself today, so a little sad. Um, my hubs is at a work thing over in Atlantic City, so it'll be just me. And it's actually very unfortunate because I'm making two cocktails. So my plan is, is that I was thinking about this ahead of time, one of the cocktails will actually um, be good to go into the fridge and it'll be all nice and ready for him when he gets home this evening. So he'll be home a little later and then he can enjoy that. So my theme tonight is watermelon. And as we discussed um, at our stream last weekend, and actually I think, take, I take that back because I think we had to cut a lot of that off. My stream last weekend was super choppy. My apologies if any of you hopped on. Um, you know, it's funny, and I mentioned this on the stream last weekend, but you know, hopefully a lot of you weren't there because it was really a hot mess, is that the more I feel like I know what I'm doing, the more things happen and get in the way um, and just kind of put me on my toes about things. So, um, so hopefully this one will be smoother. I'm looking at my screen, and it looks like I don't have that message that I had on... Um, on the weekend so I'm hoping this one's much smoother and certainly the drinks will be smoother so watermelon is such an iconic fruit for summer and oh my goodness I think I feel like all not all parts of the world because some parts of the world are having other seasons but for a lot of us that are experiencing summer many of us have been having a really really hot summer and for me all kinds of melon but especially watermelon are so refreshing in the summertime you know they they, they have so much fiber in them. They're sweet, but they're super juicy. So you get so much water just by eating them and which makes them a perfect fruit for summer. So there's so many good summer fruits, but watermelon definitely stands up there. And I think watermelon makes fabulous summer cocktails. Now you could have this all year round, but if you're being seasonal, if you're really getting fruit at its prime, summer is going to be when you're going to get your best watermelon. So I'm making two. Um, and it's funny because as much as I like ordering watermelon drinks, I actually, I've, I make them on the fly at home, but you know, I'm not really even measuring, like I've done a watermelon margarita based on my measurements for my orange margarita. But I always feel like it's a little bit sweet. So I, I, if I, you know, if I had time, I'd play around with the measurements, if I add a little more lime to balance it. Um, I'm really excited to do a, this watermelon Cosmo for you tonight and give that a try because I decided, you know what, I'm going to do this right. I'm going to do some research and I'm going to rely on someone that is an absolute favorite um, of mine and for many people, and that is Ina Garden. And especially during the pandemic, and I think we talked about that this in one of her earlier streams. You know, she had made Cosmos in this big old glass. And I just love that she doesn't take herself too seriously and she's just very re relatable. So um, both of the recipes and the links are down below in the description are from Ina Garden. So the first one I'm gonna make is uh, her Cosmo. And the second one I'm going to make is her Mojito. Now, what I love about Ina's recipes is that she makes it so easy to make for a group which is great, right? Because you don't want to be, if you're having people over, um, you know, whether it's a party or a pool party or just bringing stuff to the beach, you don't want to be mixing drinks. You want it easy peasy and all set to go. So um, that I love. However, it's hard when you're making just one. So I did my best to do the math and um, so that I can just make one Cosmo and one mojito and you know I love mojitos actually I like Cosmos too so these are two of my favorite classic drinks and with them with the watermelon spin on them so um yes yeah, so you can see I have all the ingredients here in fact you can sh here's our lovely watermelon I got this from our nearby um food market 
the, and it was delicious. We've been, we've been eating it. Um, and for these recipes, it is much easier to use seedless because you are going to be pureeing the juice, which I already did here. Whoopsie, didn't mean to spin that again. Let me take that out. So yeah, I already pureed the juice. So we are going to be using that. Um, and the other hack, I will say, uh, I did not use it this time because I wanted to kind of, you know, go old school, school and just blend her up. Um, the other thing that you can do that I've done many times in the past is there's the only place I have found this particular um, beverage, you'll see what I mean, uh, is at Whole Foods, but they have this thing called watermelon water. And it basically is pureed watermelon and you could use it as a drink, but I use, I've used it to mix and make watermelon drinks. So if you're feeling lazy and you can find it, I find that's really hard to find. I haven't I haven't really seen it any place else besides at Whole Foods and the Spike were all their fresh squeezed juices, not the ones they do, but there's like other brands they have. And so um, that's something you can, one way you can definitely use it. But what I did was I simply, you know, to start with cubed up some my watermelon and I pureed it so that it is perfect to go into a drink. So like I said, on the recipes below, they are more big, bigger batch recipes. I think the one is for four servings and the other one's for six servings. So I'm gonna start with the watermelon um, Cosmo. So if you are joining me, by the way, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of my streams. And also be sure to like the video. And if you have any questions, you know, please pop them in the chat or anything you wanna share about cocktails or watermelon or what your favorite watermelon cocktails are. Um, or if you're watching this after the stream, please be sure to um, leave any questions or comments down below. I um, try to stay on top of that and get back to you with any responses that you might need. So we're starting with the Cosmo. So the ingredients for our Cosmo are very classic, except for we are using watermelon um, as the flavor. It's going to have vodka, it's going to have Cointreau. You could use triple sec. I'm going to use Cointreau tonight. Um, we're going to use some lime to balance the sweetness of the watermelon and then a mint garnish you don't have to do the mint garnish but mint is just lovely with watermelon the other garnish if you're making this that i think would be great would be basil i think watermelon and basil go very well together too but i'm gonna i have mint you can see my nice little mint plant i've been having trouble growing my mint here in the city inside um i don't have an outside patio so anything i do i've got to do inside and i've been doing well with the basil, parsley, um, thyme, but my mint, this is my second mint plant, and so I'm hoping this one will do better once I transplant it. So in any event, let me get to started on the Cosmo. So the first thing I'm going to do is get some of these ingredients in. So for, so I was guesstimating again, looking at the big batch um, that Ina Garden had. So my guesstimate is about two ounces of um, watermelon. So I'm gonna put that in. So two ounces of watermelon juice I have there. And then to that, I'm gonna add one and a half ounces of vodka. And we love Tito's, so Tito's it will be. But what are, what's the vodka you like to use? So I'm gonna do one and a half ounces. Okay. And then I'm gonna do three quarter ounces of Cointreau. And again, you could use triple sec. And this does not have a three quarter ounce marker, but this one does. So I'm gonna use the one that's here that goes with my shaker. There we go. We were in Asheville um, last week and we got to try so many different cocktails, which were very delicious. And I will say it reminds me so often that the best way um, to get some of the cocktails to really have the body and the flavor is by shaking. So I'm actually going to be shaking both of these. Um, I think in her recipe, you could just stir it. But since I'm doing it one at a time, I'm going to shake them because I do feel like it always gives it that little extra, oomph, like it just brings it together more. And then we're going to do a half ounce of lime. I'm going to guesstimate there. 
Okay. All right. Half ounce of lime. And I'm going to put the ice in. Get that shaken up. Okay, let's see. Oh, and if you notice, I don't have my lovely tunes tonight. So we were using the, um, and you could double strain it. I'm not gonna double strain it. I'm just gonna strain it first here. Oh, beautiful color. I'll show this to you in just a quick sec. Don't wanna miss any of that. Very nice. And then what I'm, you can see that beautiful color. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a sprig of mint top and I'm going to as I've learned from some of the mixologists I'm going to smack it so that it'll actually better release the um, those oils okay so there we do where there we have it so let me show that to you how beautiful that is you can see gorgeous color and I'm going to give it a taste right now Oh, that is awesome. I think the two ounces of the watermelon, I feel like it's very balanced. If you wanted it less sweet, you could either reduce the watermelon um, or increase some lime. But I think that actually, I think that's quite balanced. Very nice. Wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to, so where should I put that? I'll put that right there so y'all can see it beautiful cocktail and then I'm going to begin working on the mojito so I'm going to empty my shaker here because I'm going to go ahead and mix that up and in fact one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to get that ice in my tall glass here as you know if Hubs was here we'd be using the bigger Pilsner glasses but this one will work fine by me and I noticed in her recipe which I thought was interesting that for the mojito she does not add any seltzer so that you know honestly most um, mojitos have you know club soda seltzer sparkling water in them and so that's something I would definitely often add but can totally be up to you so for our mojito um, what I'm going to do first actually I forgot to get my muddler out what I'm going to do first is one of the ingredients is a half a lime. So I quartered it up because it really helps it in the muddling. And I'm putting that at the bottom. And I'm just smushing it. Doing that first. Okay. All right. In fact, I'm going to get this moved out of the way. There we go. Okay. So I muddled my lime. And then to that, I'm gonna be adding two and a half ounces of watermelon puree. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to pure, pour that this time. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to dip it like I did. Okay, I'm a little drippy. So there's two. No, I think I will just scoop a half. Oh. Nope, oh, not working. Okay. Let's see, it's a little more than I want. Okay, there we go. Oops, put this right here. So two and a half of watermelon puree, and then two ounces of rum. And I was thinking to myself, whoa, Ina. Like, I think if you remember when I made the mojito, uh, one of the one, my favorite ways to make a mojito, especially if it's just for one or two people, is just, you know, muddling and really making it fresh with um, brown sugar and you know and and just the flavor it imparts is just so fresh and delicious um, and i usually put one and a half rum in there so if this is strong then i would definitely do one and a half i'll let you know you know i will be honest with you so i'm gonna do per her per ina's like hearty recommendations and she says two so i'm gonna put it in we'll see we'll see how my palate handles that 
I do like a really well-balanced drink. Hubs likes things a little stronger, but for me, I, I just really like it to be everything in sync. So I have my two ounces of rum. Then we put a half ounce of simple syrup. So a little more sweetener. Okay, I have a half ounce simple syrup. Of course, simple syrup is just the same amount of sugar as to water. Boil it, let it, or you don't have to actually boil it, but bring it up to heat two, a lot of times just to a boil, and then you take it off the heat and make sure to stir it till it dissolves, and then you can chill it. Um, and that's it. So we have the puree, the rum, the simple syrup, the lime, and that's already in there. And um, and then the mint. So what I'm going to do with my mint is I'm going to take some that we'll put in the drink. So let me just take this and get that, put that in the drink. And I'm going to get some leaves to actually, I think I'll leave that guy alone. I'm going to take some of these bottom leaves. I never know the best way to do this on these plants because... My, like I said, the last mint plant just was not happy with me. I like lots of mint. So I'm going to smack this and I'm going to put that in there. I'm going to add some ice and I'm going to shake. There we go. I'm really missing my music. Do the shake. So I, I have to laugh because I feel like just as you figure out one technical difficulty, another one crops up because once I saw that everything was looking good um, with the stream, then my music wasn't working. And the reason is because when we were away, we were using our little, you know, our little dinky um, speaker to listen to tunes like from our phone, you know, when we were getting ready or hanging out in our the place we were staying. And now it will not sync up with the laptop that I get the tunes from. So, you know, it's not one thing, it's the other. So it's a little quiet here. It's quiet, it's just me and there's no tunes. Not happy about that. So let's see how this looks. <laughs> Better yet, let's see how this tastes. Because I am a bit of a wuss. With really strong drinks, so let's see. Now, of course, it would be beautiful if you wanted to, you know, put some chunks in or even freeze some chunks if you wanted to put a chunk on the side. But I'm going to try this mojito. So I've tried the Cosmo and I'm going to try the mojito. Oh, that's really good. Oh, that is really, really refreshing. I thought the two ounces was going to be too strong, but I think because there's a little bit more of the, um, there you can see, because there's a little bit more of the watermelon in that drink, it's fine. It it is it tastes really balanced. Now I do like what the bubbles, even a little bit, a splash of club soda adds to it. So um, I think I would do that just because I feel like that's one of the things I like about mojitos is besides the flavors I like what the soda does to kind of the texture and the feel, the mouthfeel of it. Um, but it's delicious. And obviously with it being an Ina Garden recipe, as I said, you have a batch recipe. So it's really easy to make them for a crowd. Um, you can make, you know, one of the batches or a couple batches if you're having more people. So these are two delicious drinks. Again, in the past, I've made my watermelon drinks without measuring anything and they're decent, but these are better because I, relied on a master who knows her stuff and knows how to make a good cocktail. So thank you, Ina Garden, for your recipes. These were delicious. And I hope that wherever you're sipping on is delicious and try these recipes, especially in the summertime, and see if they don't give you a little bit of, you know, the water that you need back, but also give you a nice little thirst quencher. So I hope you have a great rest of your week. Oh, coming up. So, I am making, I'm gonna be dropping um, tonight or tomorrow, I'm gonna to be dropping the rest of my schedule. And in that, I'm gonna be um, making a change to this weekend. Originally, I was going to be making the corn pie 
actually I was calling it Jersey corn pie because I really wanted to use Jersey sweet corn with it. And I'm going to put that off a couple of weeks only because of just, you know, the things, the activities that we're doing and, um, and just, I was thinking that would be better in a couple of weeks. So you're going to have to hold tight with that a little bit, a little bit, but I promise you it's, it's worth it. So don't despair. So I, instead on Saturday evening, I'm going to be making, um, and I've never made these before. I've had them out. In fact, we had, um, I had a poke bowl in Asheville at this delicious place called Rosa Bees. It's right in the river arts district. And it was outstanding. One of my, one of the best poke bowls I've ever had. So I'm actually, I've always wanted to make my own. And so I'm going to be making, um, spicy tuna poke bowls. Um, so I'm super excited about that. And it'll be hubs and I, um, our dinners on Saturday evening. So he'll be with me and I'm excited because no matter what it's going to be, I think, you know, it still is warm today and it's going to be more humid. Um, cause we're in the, the thick of it here in the city in the summer. So it'll be a nice, uh, refreshing dinner that involves, um, no cooking. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to make my, um, I do have to cook my, what do you call it, my sushi rice. So I might make that in the morning, but you'll see, you'll have to wait and see. So that'll be this weekend on Saturday evening. And then, and I'll be giving you more information about that if you are on Twitter. So Philly Philly Live on Twitter, I give you all the latest. I keep you updated on schedule changes, what new schedules are, uh, if anything gets delayed and I do lots of food sharing on there. And then, um, on Wednesday, I'm going to be doing another try and buy or try or buy, try or bye bye. So a uh, food review. So we are going to, we have not eaten here for years. Um, it's been, it's been like probably at least five years and that is Luke's lobster. So there's Luke's lobster at many locations, um, you know, around the country and we have not been there in a while and we've definitely not done take up from them. So we went there and there, there's not a lot of places to sit at Luke's Lobster, the one in the cities in Rittenhouse. So I'm going to be ordering, I figure that's a perfect summer dish to try and see how Luke's Lobster is doing and see if they're still good. When we ate in their place, we thought they did a decent uh, lobster roll. I mean, I must say I've been to Maine for like a stellar on the dock lobster roll. So I, you know, Luke's Lobster, I know they're a Maine based, but you know, it's really hard to, to match that freshness when you're right up there. However, I um, I do want to give them a try. And I, I noticed they have a couple different kinds. So we'll probably try some different types so that we can give some a taste. So we'll let you know how that goes. So that'll be on Wednesday. So Poke Bowls, it's a great summer fair. Poke Bowls this weekend on Saturday and checking out Luke's Lobster with our takeout trier buy in the city on Wednesday. So I hope you have a great rest of your week, a great weekend. And I hope you love what's ever in your glass, whether it's water, iced tea, or a special cocktail, wine, or a spritzer. And have a great rest of your week. Until we see you again, take care.